Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. Welcome. We're glad you could join us once again. It's a, it's a pretty day today. Again, it's a wonderful day in our neighborhood. <laughs> and I hope you'll take a little time to go out and enjoy the wonderful things in your neighborhood today, too. Yes, we hope that you are drinking whatever it is that you are drinking. Hopefully a nice, warm herbal beverage like mm -hmm. we are, one of our herbal teas or a cold tea. It's getting that time of year where... I'm almost ready to give up the hot tea altogether. <laughs> the hot tea is good in the mornings. <laughs> it is good in the mornings, no matter what temperature it is. We are Tamara and Twyla. We are a mother-daughter team. We have a small shop called Good Earth Gatherings, just south of Lawrence, Kansas. Mm -hmm. And we also provide a uh, Good Earth Herb School, where we teach a 10-month home herbalist apprenticeship program. And we have lots of other classes as well. And we hope that you'll go to our website and sign up for our newsletter so that you can get our newsletter each month. We just send out usually one one a month with mm -hmm. a kind of a lot of what we chat about here and a, a few extra things as well. So thank you so much for joining us and do please take a moment if you would and like, comment and share our post because that really helps our algorithm. You know, sometimes yeah. the social media doesn't make it easy for small businesses. And so when people like, comment and share, that really helps us out. Thank mm -hmm. you. It has been a, a bit of a rainy week here in our neck of the woods. Of course, with rain comes humidity and the allergies are not that good either right now. So it's just some of those things we, we uh, put up with and to enjoy the good days when they do come along. One of the things, if you're out walking, you might find uh, laying on the ground and, and they have always fascinated me. And those are uh -huh. the little maple tree seeds. We used to yeah, call okay. these helicopter seeds when, I, when my kids were small. And you you throw them in the air and they kind of spin to the, spin to the ground. So <laughs> yes, they were much, much fun always. And, uh, <laughs> but there's something that's laying there on the ground. Of course, they'll sprout up little trees. I always like to figure out what could you do with them. And in my book, I did mention something one could do with them. And this is just one I've started. I've not finished it yet. But this is uh, taking the seeds, coating them with Mod Podge, and painting them. And finding a little twig stick out there that you can clip off and put on as the body of the dragonfly. I love dragonflies. Painted them a couple different colors and I got a little iridescent spray and sprayed on them too to give them that little shiny look that the dragonflies have as they fly out to greet us as I walk down my lane. So, so pretty. They're just fun to do something with and I will put a little verse down here what the dragonfly is symbolic of and such. So I think that'll be fun to do. But I love that. So. Oh and what a great activity to do with kids also. It I is. love I love things that we can do with kids that have to do with nature and get them out in nature and looking mm -hmm. and being aware of that what they what they're seeing. Well and the thing is if you work with a, a child on, or, or even yourself, if you're making something like this out of the, the seed pod, you'll never forget about it. Yeah, that's You'll right. always remember it. That's wonderful. And that's fun. The other thing out there blooming right now, of course, is your iris for one thing. Yes. Oh, Tongue. yeah. We, I have a beautiful iris garden. Mom, I know, talked about iris earlier. It, it was. I remember it always being one of my grandma's favorite flowers, and uh, it's always been one of mom's favorite flowers, and so it's it's one of my favorite flowers, too, and this is... Just one that, uh, a couple that are blooming right now in my iris garden. And they are so incredibly beautiful, aren't they? This this one is just like, there's just one stalk that had like six on it. It was just amazing. So, so pretty. It we is, just love our iris. It is one stalk with about four other stalks coming off of it and like four flowers on every stalk. Amazing. It was just a stunning. monstrous one. Yes. Really stunning. And uh, we have lots of iris and Tamara has a couple rows of probably 30 varieties or whatever. Oh yeah, at they're, least. <laughs> and they're all in bloom right now, so they are beautiful. They are. I, you know, one of the things we love about iris too is that they they can come back every year, of course, and that they make more iris, which yes. again, like daffodils, makes them really wonderful to plant because mm -hmm. you only have to plant them once and then you have others that you can share. That's right. And those we call pass-along plants. That's right. So I'll talk about that in just yeah. a minute, but I love pass-along plants. But one of the other things blooming in our gardens right now is onion chives. Those pretty pink little flowers. And I hope everybody has those growing in their gardens because they're so versatile. You can clip the flowers, uh, pull the petals off the flowers and clip the uh, leaves off and put them into cream cheese for a wonderful dip or something mm, to spread yummy. on a bagel or what, whatever you choose to do. And the, even the little petals of the flowers can be pulled off and sprinkled in your salad, yes. your green salad. They are just the most wondrous thing. Uh, but chives also will spread a lot in the garden if you don't clip off the the heads as they go to seed. Now we like to leave them blooming this long and then 
uh, as they're fresh yet in their bloom, we clip them off to use them for a vinegar. I like to cut mine up between 10 o'clock in the morning and noon because that allows dew to dry uh, off the flowers. They are very fragrant. The oils have come up into the blossoms. And then we can just stick them down in the heads. I just take the heads and pull them off and stick them down into a jar. And this is the result. It makes a wonderful vinegar. And look how pretty pink it is. And that comes from the blossoms. It'll make turn, turn it pink. And we use uh, the vinegars on lots of things. We'll put it in deviled eggs. We'll put it in potato salad. We'll sprinkle it on roasted veggies. Yeah. Just so many things that we can use it for. Uh, salad dressing. Salad dressing, yeah. mainly for our greens. Yes, Primarily. we mix up our own, yep. yes. And so I hope you are growing some of these. And if you're not and you know somebody who is, just uh, hang tight with these grow and turn to seed. <laughs> and they will turn brown and go to seed before long. You can just ask if you can have a head of them and you'll have your seed then. And if when you're growing them in the garden, be sure to clip all the uh, heads off later on. The bees love them at this point. Mm -hmm. The bees absolutely love them. Yeah. And I like to share a few of them with my bees that live in my neighborhood. Later on, I'll clip them all off so that they will not. The ones I don't use, I use so many of them though. Yeah, we love and them. I love to have yeah. them. Yeah, and, and the, the leaves too, the little hollow leaves, of mm. course, taste like onions. They're, they're they, like a replacement yes. for scallions. You know, a lot of they times are. we use like scallions or a recipe will call for scallions mm -hmm. in cooking. You can just use the chive leaves for mm -hmm. a, a scallions replacement and just chop them up and put in your salad also. And this Ooh, happens to be a mother pretty. of time out of my garden too that I just used to make another vinegar with, with using the white wine vinegar again. But it's so pretty, even sitting in a window. I always keep mine in the refrigerator after I've made them. Beautiful after time they, they don't have to be in the refrigerator, but I like them there. But oh, it's just so pretty with the sunlight coming through it. So I always make one to just keep in my big window that sits in front of my kitchen sink so I can just see the beauty of it. Mm -hmm. They are so pretty and make nice gifts as well. They do. And so easy to make, right? Absolutely. All you gotta easy. do is put your plants in. Put your vinegar on top, and there you go. And, and you got your vinegar. <laughs> tip it a couple times. And, but this is the time of year when we start making our vinegar. So this is the first thing we make our vinegars with, or the chives. And then it'll go clear through with the thyme or the dill. Uh, you can make vinegars out of any of those things Absolutely. that are fragrant. And then uh, it'll end with in the fall, when, or the late summer, I guess it is, when we use the garlic chives. The yeah. flower heads because they're just wonderful too. They're wonderful. And one of the other things that's getting ready to flower in our yards is our peonies. Well, mine are blooming. Oh, yours are. That's mm -hmm. right. Yours are already yours are, blooming. Yes. And mine, I think, are a little bit more in the shade, and so they aren't quite blooming yet. And I just wanted to mention, you know, a lot of people have asked about the ants that are on the peonies and. Peonies and ants have a mutually beneficial relationship, and we want to make they sure go together. They do. We want to make sure that we honor that and that we aren't using, you know, trying to get rid of bugs. Uh, that's one of the things we've uh -huh. talked about many times before is how our insect populations have already plummeted so much that we want to really support our insect populations. And peonies actually secrete a, a sweet kind of a nectar and that attracts the ants. And that's deliberate because the ants mm -hmm. then actually defend the peonies from other insects that might damage them. And so we want to make sure that we honor that, that we say thank you to the ants on the peonies because they're helping to protect our peonies. And then we just enjoy our beautiful peonies. We hope that you have some pretty flowers in your yard also, or you can enjoy some from a neighbor. Mm -hmm. It's such a wonderful, beautiful rite of spring, and May is such a beautiful month for that. I think that's a wonderful relationship that the peonies have with the ants. Mm -hmm. It's just so, so wonderful. Nature is wonderful. It is wonderful. And the more we learn, the more wonderful mm -hmm. we know that mm -hmm. it is. Looking forward to the upcoming next few days, we wanted to mention that tomorrow is the new moon. And mm -hmm. I know we oftentimes talk about the full moon, we but do. we also honor the new moon time. You know, a new moon time is a time to pull in, to rest, to recognize, I feel like it's the time to recognize that we don't always have to shine brightly. It's okay to have those times when we are pulling inward yes. and just keeping our light for ourselves. And that's all right. And it's, I think the moon is a wonderful 
metaphor for life and also to um, really show us how to wax and wane and that it is okay. We don't have to be productive and shining all of the time. It's okay to pull in and to rest. And the new moon is really a time for that. To recharge. Yes, to recharge, exactly. Mm -hmm. To renew ourselves. You know, the time when children grow is when they are resting and sleeping and the time when our bodies you know, rebuild themselves mm -hmm. and heal is when we are resting and sleeping. It's that rest and renew time is so very important. And so I think the new moon helps us to remember that. It's a little reminder. And also it's a time of new beginnings. And so it's a time sometimes when we like to start things like herbal vinegars or tinctures or other things sometimes on the mm -hmm. new moon so that it is the time to begin. And a lot of times with herbal things, we do things in a six week cycle. So the new moon to the new moon is f four weeks and then to the full moon is six weeks. And so that's a really nice rem reminder mm -hmm. is that if we start things on the new moon, then the second full moon from that is our six week mark. And that really is a, a different way of marking time. It's a little mm -hmm. bit more in cycle with Mother Earth mm -hmm. and nature, and we, we really enjoy that. And then the day after that, on the 20th, is World Bee Day. So talking about insects and how important they are. Bees. I think, yeah, I think we've all heard about how very important our pollinators are and the honeybees. Did you know there's about 20,000 different varieties of bees and only about seven of those are actually honeybees. And they are such an amazing creature on our planet and they're so very important. Did you know that in a honey beehive, they need to maintain the temperature for the health of the hive, they need to maintain the temperature at 93 degrees. And so if it gets colder than that, the bees all vibrate their bodies to warm up the hive. And if it gets hotter than that, they fan their wings to cool down the hive. It's absolutely amazing. And honeybees are such interesting creatures. Did you know that all of the bees that live in the hive are all females? It's a female-centric uh, population. The ones that there are males, the drones, but they, they live outside of the hive and they don't have any stingers. They can't sting. Only the female bees can sting and they can only sting once because honeybees have a barbed stinger and so it sticks in us with they sting us and then they and then they die. So they don't sting just willy nilly. They you know they sting if they really feel threatened. And so mm -hmm. that's one of the reasons why a lot of hives you can you can go to and you can tend without even using smoke if you have an intentional relationship with the bees. If the bees are not aggressive, and um, and if you are gentle as you mm -hmm. as you tend to the hives. We love bees and one of the herbs that we think about when we think about bees is lemon balm. Did you know that the the bees are called melissae and our lemon balm is called Melissa officinalis. It is named after the honeybees because when the queen leaves the hive and the hive swarms, and this is a time of year when a lot of times uh -huh. that will happen, you'll see bees swarming in the early spring uh, and, and in the fall oftentimes. They're looking for a new place to live because maybe they've outgrown their old hive or conditions there weren't what they wanted it to be. Or they're separating. Yeah, the, the, the queen bee, she emits a lemony pheromone scent and that's how the bees find her. And so our lemon balm is an herb that many beekeepers would plant next to the hives because it would maybe call a new swarm in or it would help to keep the swarm that was already there living there. So I think that's just amazing. I know we've talked about lemon balm before and how it's one yes. of our favorite herbs, but I think that's an interesting it tidbit. Is. Well, and lemon balm is looking great in the garden right now. I hope you all have it planted in your uh, garden because it makes our, one of our favorite beverages for the summertime. It's just, yes. I add rose petals to it, you can add lavender to it, whatever, put it in a big jar and let it infuse for a while and pour it over ice. Oh my goodness, it's just delicious. Absolutely. And so um, I was looking out at my lemon balm too because if you did not get it trimmed last year, it's going to be producing some little babies this year. And those little babies can be given to others called pass along plants in my book. I love to pass along things to other others that might be growing in my garden because a lot of my garden came from other people too. Mine too. <laughs> yes. And you know, we talk about uh, uh, passing down or passing along many things. It could be recipes to each other. It could be clothes that were passed down to another child to wear and pass along our plants. So when your iris are big enough that you can separate them out and somebody wants a start, you can give them a start. 
uh, the same is with that lemon balm. It also with the chives that makes little babies. And, and if you don't want the, all those babies in your yard, just dig them up and put them in a little flat and offer them to others. Offer them to others, yeah. absolutely, because that's what we love to pass along plants. And there will be many of them you see in your garden that probably came from someone else or things that you can share with someone else, plants you can share. That's, yes. that's what it's all about. We love our pass along oh, plants. Very much so. It makes me think of one of my favorites of my uh, variegated Solomon seal that I got mm -hmm. from one of my uh, herbal mentors, Madeline, uh, way back when. And I love that plant. It's such a beautiful plant. It is. And I have some of that in my yard yes. because she passed along to me. Yes, we pass <laughs> along to one we another. We go back to each other and so on. <laughs> So it's, it's, it's a good thing to do, something to keep in the back of your mind always. Don't just pull out the little plants and throw them away. Those are plants that somebody's going to have to go buy somewhere. But yeah, someone can share enjoy. Them, share them with someone else. It's, it, it's, it brings joy to other people. It really and does. it also helps to, you know, we're always telling our students to teach what you know, teach what mm -hmm. you know. And I think that that's part of the Pass Along Plants is that we're, we're teaching what we know, right? Mm -hmm. And we're sharing those, those plants and, and how we've enjoyed them with other people. And so they can enjoy them and teach mm -hmm. it to the next person, right? It's good to, enjoy, to pass along those words of wisdom, too. Oh, <laughs> yes, exactly. It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as we're drinking our tea here, too, I'm thinking also that, you know, the 20th is, is World Bee Day, but the next day is International Tea Day. <laughs> <laughs> We've got all kinds of interesting <laughs> days coming up and we want to honor those days and, and enjoy the fact that they are being honored. And it's really interesting because tea, tea, you know, when we call something a tea, actually technically it comes from the Camellia sinensis plant, which grows in China. Mm -hmm. And that's the plant that we get our green tea, our black tea, our white teas all from. But of course, as herbalists, we call our herbal teas teas yes. also, even though technically they're actually called tisanes, T-I-S-A-N-E, which is a French word, but we call them teas because everybody knows what an herbal tea mm -hmm. is, and, and we love our herbal teas, and one of our favorites for the summertime, now that it's getting warmer, we, we have now again blended our wonderful summer breeze tea that people just love, and that's one of the things that we're really serving a lot in the shop right now in the summertime on the Fridays and Saturdays that we're open. And it has all kinds of wonderful herbs in it, including hibiscus and, and holy basil and uh, spearmint, of course. Uh -huh. Spearmint's in so many of our teas. We absolutely love spearmint. Spearmint's another pass-along plant, too. Uh, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> there are uh, many little starts from the spearmint plant that one can pass along to someone else. Sometimes they'll take them and sometimes they won't because it's a little bit of an invasive plant. Depends on where you put it, though. Yeah, I wouldn't be without it. Yeah, if, if you live in town and you don't have a spot for it to run, because it mm -hmm. will run, uh, mm -hmm. we like to say, you know, plant it in a pot. And yes. It, it's happy in a pot also. Yes. So I think I'd like to close with a quote today uh, from my book again. Don't wait for someone to bring you flowers. Plant your own garden and decorate your own soul. That's by Luther Burbank. What wonderful advice. Yes. yes. And so I think that does it for today. Thank you so much for being here. And we'll see you next time. Good Earth Blessings to you. Mm -hmm.